What's going on everyone? This is Dom and today we are talking about this guy right here. This is the new MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 chip inside of it. Um, I actually picked up uh, the model with 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. I found it locally. Pro tip here, if you're looking for more of a maxed out or spec'd out version of a MacBook, uh, stores do typically carry a few of those, um, especially around launch days. They're called the Max version. So I picked this up in store, actually. I didn't have to wait for it to be built to order or anything like that. But hey, let me tell you, I, I just gotta explain my experience with this so far because holy crap, all of my expectations were absolutely shattered. And I mean that in the best way possible. Like I didn't expect this thing to be as good as it is. And right here I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which just to tell you a little bit about this is 2.3 gigahertz, eight core model, 32 gigabytes of RAM uh, with the AMD Radeon Pro 5600M with eight gigabytes of VRAM. So this is an expensive MacBook. I think it was like $3,500, $4,000, somewhere around that range. This guy, uh, with uh, my business Apple store business discount was somewhere around the $1,800 range. So literally um, probably around half the price of the 16 inch model right here. Of course, the screen is smaller. I mean, we do have a much smaller screen here. Um, the speakers aren't as good as the 16 inch model. And of course we have the sad story with only two USB type C ports on here, four or two that are both three ports on the side of there. Uh, that's probably the biggest downside for me to be honest about this specific machine right here uh, because on this I have a lot more ports two more to be exact so typically at any given time I'm running a USB-C hub a couple of external drives and handy dandy power cable and that this little guy right here makes a huge difference for me because um, this big boy when I'm editing video on it dies like crazy. Now right here on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I do have my video project from the HomePod video that I just put up. Um, so this is the entire video project right here. Uh, I have everything loaded up. I actually have it loaded up here on, uh, on my 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I gotta tell you, cutting through this on either of these machines, wow, like zero difference. My dream MacBook Pro has always been a 13 inch MacBook Pro with like an eight core processor and dedicated graphics, right? That's been my dream. I've always said if they ever came out with that, boom, I'm dropping the large screen model altogether because I can deal with a screen size uh, like this. Like this is fine with for me. I can edit no problem on a smaller screen and I have my iPad, which I can use um, as a, a side display if, if I needed to do that. If for some reason I needed more displays, I have that option with the iPad and I can plug in, you know, obviously an external display to this as well. But I like the portability and the size of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So let me just show you this here. Just, I mean, just even scrubbing through the timeline, it's fluid. Like everything is fluid, you know, I can. There you go with the little setup notification. You just tap setup, we choose a play. I can easily play through anything on here of my without a problem and at all. Since I can airplay with my Sonos uh, sound. So that to me was pretty surprising. Uh, on top of the fact that just editing this, just cutting, cutting through things, throwing in uh, B-roll, color correcting. The basic stuff that I will do in my workflow was zero issues with this M1 MacBook. And I'm not even getting into benchmarks or anything stupid like that in this video because honestly, yes, they're high. They're higher than any Intel Mac. I get it. I don't really care about the benchmarks to be honest. I care about my workflow. I don't care if this thing had the lowest benchmark score of all Intel Macs. If it does what I need it to do, that's the important part here. So even just taking these two side by side right here, I'm just gonna export them, right? I'm just gonna export both of the videos. We'll go up to 4K, uh, use a compressor setting here. Let's go ahead and click next. And I'm just gonna throw this wherever. We're gonna throw them both on the desktop. Um, and I'm not even trying to really race these two because honestly, I know who the winner's gonna be. The point here is that these MacBooks right here are virtually the same. Like I feel like the 13 inch competes with this specked out 16 inch model now, which is absolutely crazy for me. And I guarantee you at some point we will hear the fans ramp up on, on the bigger MacBook because you know, that's just kind of what happens when this thing starts to get warm. It, it starts to get warm right here 
Um, I can feel it already getting warm. This one is still cool to the touch. The 16 inch is a little bit ahead in terms of the export. I mean, on the 13 inch, we have 18%. On the 16 inch, we have 24%. I expected to export a little bit faster on the big boy, um, but by how much faster though? If I'm saving $2,000, let's say, on, on on the machine that does my workflow, are the seconds that it that the 16 inch wins by really worth that extra two thousand dollars? I know you could get all kinds of math numbers, you know, crazy equations going on where it's like, okay, well, each second is worth blah blah blah, but at the end of the day, like, they're only 10 percent apart. I can already hear the fans ramping up on this guy right here and it's getting pretty warm now. Uh, the point being here is that this is at 58%, this is at 69%, so they're still within that 10% margin of difference. So basically, as soon as I see that the export has finished on here, I'm going to start uh, the stopwatch just to see how much longer it took the 13 inch to comp compete with the 16 inch here. So just getting ready uh, to get that fired up. This keeps wanting to go to sleep. Like it's just tired. Like it's, <laughs> it's doing nothing here. All right, so we finished the export on here. Uh, this is at 81% now and uh, I have the stopwatch going right here. Uh, what I did notice is that the battery drain on here during this export was 2% versus on here, it was almost 6% battery drain uh, for the export here. And so we're about to be finished. Yeah, look at, I would say probably two minutes longer uh, for the export on, on the 13 inch versus the 16 inch. That's what it's looking like it's gonna be at least right now. And to me, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, maybe it's a big deal to you. Maybe two minutes makes a huge difference. But for me, when I'm exporting something, I'm I'm off doing something else. I'm probably shooting more footage or you know whatever I need to be doing at the time. And I don't think that that makes a huge, huge difference for me. All right, so we're done. Yeah, two minutes and nine seconds worth of a difference right here uh, between the export on the two. Now, <laughs> just think about this for a second. I know two minutes is quite a lot of, of time. First of all, you hear that airplane roaring right here? Yeah, that's that's my, my 16 inch just totally beefed out on, on the fans uh, going and stuff. And it is still pretty warm. Meanwhile, little baby over here very cool to the touch and like let's 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 be real here this has a uh, dedicated graphics in it um, we we have uh, what the AMD Radeon 5600 M with 8 gigabytes of VRAM we have an 8 core uh, processor in here this has the M1 chip <laughs> to me that's impressive, two minutes or not. So obviously one thing that people are going to be concerned with is app compatibility, which is a valid concern. I mean, we're in a t an entirely different system here. The M1 chip, it's not an Intel chip. All these apps have been optimized to work with Intel chips forever, like for a long time. You know, this big boy right here works fine. No problems at all, but you know what also works fine? Photoshop works fine right here on the M1 chip. I mean, all I'm doing is making thumbnails, you know, uh, Final Cut seems to work fine as well. Everything scrubs like butter. It plays back like butter. I'm even running screen recording on this as I'm showing you guys this, and that's obviously taking away from resources, and I'm still having zero problems uh, showing or hiding elements, you know. I'm making thumbnails for YouTube videos on Photoshop. My primary apps are Photoshop, Illustrator, um, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, um, things like that. I have a lot of confidence in this machine. Yeah, exporting a video might take a little bit longer, but as far as app compatibility goes, if you're concerned about it, that is valid. And with those concerns, maybe wait until the apps that you use are optimized for the M1 chip. For me personally, I kind of just dove in head first just to see what this was all about. And I haven't had any issues so far. It's pretty exciting actually. I'm pretty impressed by the M1 MacBook Pro and this wasn't any like scientific video or anything like that, but I wanted to give you my thoughts after actually using the dang thing for a little bit of time because for me, in my workflow, this makes a difference. And having this kind of portability at its price point, even though it is lacking some things, I think is still a major win. But 
everybody's gonna see that differently. I just wanted to tell you things from my perspective. But let me know what you think about Apple's new MacBook Pros and MacBook Air and the Mac Mini, the M1 chip in general, down in the comments section below. I feel like there's gonna be some huge leaps, especially when we get into the big boys like this. Imagine how powerful something like this could be, right? That's the real winner. Imagine how powerful uh, an iMac Pro or a Mac Pro could be. Holy goodness. So I think that for the meanwhile, I'm gonna stick with this guy right here because I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want more updates on my situation with the M1 MacBook Pro. And again, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate all the support, everyone. If you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos like this drop in the near future. And thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Once again, this is Dom and I'll catch you in the next video.